I'm very delighted to be able to introduce the Ecosystem Restoration Camp for the Gambia. My name is Morris Phillips. I'm the chair of the Sand Daily Foundation and the coordinator for the camp, which we're anticipating will get underway to a great extent in 2021 and beyond. I'm joined this evening by my three colleagues, Greg Kaiser, who is a fellow team member of the online course that we've both recently completed, David Manet, who is the director of the Sand Daily Foundation, and El Fusedi Say, who is a member of the staff of the foundation and a very valued person uh, as well. So uh, I'd like them just to introduce themselves very briefly, please. <coughs> Hi, my name is Greg Kaiser. I'm based in Brooklyn, New York. I'm an investor, writer, and a student of ecosystem restoration. Hi, my name is David Mane. I'm the director of Sandela Foundation. I'm grateful to be part of this great initiative. Hello, my name is Alfonso Nisi. I'm a staff of the Sandela Foundation uh, and also a filmmaker. Thank you. The uh... Ecosystem Restoration Camp has been uh, going on for a while. We've been doing quite a lot of planning. Uh, COVID-19 has meant that a lot of our work has been delayed. And what we are going to be doing is working on two areas of very degraded land, which has been uh, come about that way because of wholesale, very large scale um, sand mining. We intend to engage with people both nationally, internationally and locally and it will be a collaboration and um, which will take this ecosystem restoration camp forward. We're looking forward to being able to act, gain access to the sites in 2021. Ecosystem restoration camps are based on the interaction between international and national volunteers and local people who all come together to make sure that the land is restored in a very sympathetic way. So we are hoping to uh, make sure that we do recruit many volunteers. And my colleagues will tell you a bit more uh, from now on about exactly what we have in mind. So we had a team of uh, professionals who have been looking at uh, the ERC in terms of the technicality that have worked and are still working on it, and also on the ground. We have a team of locals who have been working on the sites in terms of looking at what are the resources available, who are the stakeholders that need to be consulted. So our next step as a foundation is to do consultation with the stakeholders. And when I talk about the stakeholders, we're looking at the women farmers, the landowners, and available resources in terms of the bird watching, because all these are stakeholders that are important for the success of the ERC camp. So the sites that we have chosen are in two different communities, one in the, the community of Gunjur and the other one in the community of Katong. The two communities are not very far from each other, around uh, 10 kilometers apart from each other. Um, these locations uh, where women have been doing their farming, we're not able to do their farming there anymore. Um, the state of the places right now, it's, in, the one in Gunjur is really not, not in good shape. And because it's just recently mined. Um, the one in Katong is already ahead of the one in Gunjur um, because it has been, the mining has stopped several years ago. And so it has uh, given the opportunity for the site to start regenerating. Because of that, that process, um, the, the community and other people have been benefiting from local tourists who normally come to do bird watching. Uh, some of the, the features, important features that these two places have is that they have huge amount of dunes that are holding up, uh, uh, holding up the, 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 the ocean from uh, inundating into the, to, to, to the mine place. And the one in Gunjur uh, has a big thick forest just adjacent to it, uh, which um, is holding a lot, a lot of uh, wildlife within. The key resources that we, we think uh, are available there it's that uh, the place normally has uh, contains a lot of water during the, the rainy seasons. And this has also given us the opportunity to think broadly in terms of uh, introducing new water ideas within those sites. The roads, the roads uh, get into the sites, sometimes a little bit difficult, especially during the rainy seasons, but it's normally accessible by vehicles. And um, we, we think uh, 
it will be accessible if the uh, the project uh, um, is to to comments. Thank you. So, as we proceed. Uh, to implement this ecosystem restoration, the one thing we're keeping in mind is that Sandele has a, a deep uh, base of experience and knowledge and uh, relationships in the area and Alfu and David on the ground. Uh, so we're going to start by securing right of access to the Gunjir site uh, using those relationships uh, and hopefully that will happen by February 2021. Uh, this will involve working with the government, villages, private landowners, etc. Uh, we're also going to develop an ecotourism and bird tourism development plan uh, by March in order to uh, appeal to international partners and to really demonstrate uh, what is possible for this area. We're going to be working with the women farmers. So there, uh, as Alfu said, there are women farmers adjacent to the site. Uh, and uh, we're going to be hopefully uh, involving them in, in this process, improving uh, capacity for them to continue the work that they do. Uh, so that they are key stakeholders in this process. We're going to establish two tree nurseries uh, in the early part of the year so that we can take local seeds uh, from the sites and, uh, and uh, propagate them so that uh, we have plenty of uh, biomass uh, in the form of trees and shrubs, et cetera, to get into the ground and to start uh, creating that habitat. Uh, we're going to prepare a water management plan for Gunjur at the beginning of this year that will involve trying to capture the water that comes on the site uh, and keeping it there as long as possible uh, and to make use of it both uh, for growing uh, shrubs and trees, but also for supporting the osprey. Uh, Maurice is gonna speak in a second about a UNDP grant. Uh, and I'll just wrap up by saying that uh, uh, this is all uh, only possible if we make it economically sustainable. And we hope to do that through courses, camps and events uh, impact holidays, mind and soil retreats, summer camps, et cetera, and bring in people from other parts of the world and involve them in this process. Um, thank you. Mention has been made uh, by Greg of the UNDP plan. And this is a major project which will have a price tag on it around $20 million. And it's a much wider program than our ERC plans because it extends a coastal resilience program right along the coast. And the good thing is that the, uh, an ideas note has been prepared, which just really outlines the range of activities that could be undertaken during the coastal resilience program. And the activities that we are proposing for the ERC has been very much taken up. Not only support for the ERC program that we have, but also the adoption of the process more generally throughout the country. We mentioned already the establishment of two tree nurseries and the plan suggests that those nurseries might produce 500,000 trees over the next five years. Another element in the resilience, uh, coastal resilience program is the concept of integrated farming. This is a way of bringing together livestock, trees, vegetables, and all sorts of other uh, farming activities. And in a way, we as a foundation have been undertaking various parts of this idea of an integrated farm. The next step is actually perhaps to set up some demonstrations of that system. We have been running an improving farming skills course for women and that has been very successful. And so extending that into producing an integrated farming system is something we very much look forward to. The, the plan also suggests the pr promotion of centers of excellence. We like to feel that the work we're doing is already pretty good, uh, but if we could then set up our own center of excellence using some funds from the UNDP, that would be wonderful. All of this, of course, is totally dependent on us making an, a successful application. So none of it is guaranteed, but we're really looking forward to undertaking this very exciting program over the next many years. If you wish to know more, you can contact David Manny, the director of Sandela Foundation, either via email or via WhatsApp, or you can get to us through our Facebook page also, you can get us through our website, www.sandilfoundation.org. 
Thank you very much, and I will look forward to hear from you.